patents are a whole different area. Um, you have to have a special attorney, a patent attorney to do it. Um, they're a tad bit more expensive, a more involved process. But what they do is they give you, if when you come up with a design or an invention, they will protect, give you a, mon a monopoly on that from 20 years from the filing date from anywhere in the country. Welcome to the SeizeYourBusiness.com podcast and video blog. My name is Kevin O'Flaherty from O'Flaherty Law. Joined as always by my co-host Brian McDonald from On Purpose Growth. And our guest today is Steve Evans from Chicago IP Law. And what we're going to talk about is uh, patent and intellectual property law and kind of uh, the basics of, of patent law. So, sure. um, And we'll probably do this as a Learn About Law podcast too. So, uh, so Steve, thanks for being with us today. Yeah, thanks. Thank you for having me. Tell, tell us what you do. Um, I'm a patent attorney. I'm also a federal trial attorney. And um, I'm with Chicago IP Law. I'm a shareholder. And we specialize in patent litigation and patent application. Um, all of our attorneys in the office were both patent attorneys and also patent litigators. Cool. So uh, just to give everybody a real basic understanding, because I know there's some confusion in the marketplace, uh, there's a difference between trademark, patent, and copyright, correct? Correct. Um, yeah, briefly, there's actually, under the, you'll hear the IP umbrella, there's generally four that you hear about, patents, copyrights, trademarks, and trade secrets. Mm -hmm. Trade secrets cover things, you, and the good thing about trade secrets, you don't have to spend anything for them. They're just keeping a secret. For example, how things are made in the company, a process. You just tell all your employees, generally they'll have signed an agreement, hey, keep this secret, and as long as you can keep a secret, the class example is the formula for Coca-Cola. Recipes, as long as you can keep it a secret, it continues on and on. And if someone does violate, there are repercussions for that. Um, the other is a copyright. Those are, the legal thing is a reduction to something tangible. Records, um, songs, music. Once you write it on paper, if you get a copyright, it protects somebody else from copying it. Like t-shirts, things like that. It can be done very inexpensively. It's $35 online, um, so, and it lasts for your lifetime plus 75 years. So it's a great investment. I strongly recommend it. An attorney can show you how to do it one time, and then you can do it for the rest of the time. Trademarks are logos, class examples, Coca-Cola, the Wave, the Sign, the Nike. They help identify products. Um, generally, you want to just do it, logos, things like that. Um, patents. Um, patents are a whole different area. Um, you have to have a special attorney, a patent attorney to do it. Um, they're a tad bit more expensive, a more involved process. But what they do is they give you if when you come up with a design or an invention, they will protect, give you a, mon a monopoly on that from 20 years from the filing date from anywhere in the country. So, and those are very, very valuable because nobody can make it, use it, sell it, distribute it in the entire country for 20 years from your filing date if you get a patent. Hmm. And you can control it, license it, shut somebody else down. So for 20 years, you've got to control on the market on that product. Um, the one thing I do want to mention, which is really important for patents, if you do have an idea, you've got to, you've got to either, if you're going to tell anybody about it to pr not lose your patent rights, either have them sign a non-disclosure agreement, because if you tell someone about it and they're not under a legal duty to keep it quiet, you can lose your foreign rights immediately because most foreign countries don't have any um, grace period, and in the United States you only have a year. So if you don't do something to protect it within before you tell somebody or at a maximum within a year of the time you tell somebody who's not under duty to keep it quiet, you've lost your patent rights. So the short of it is if you've got an idea, start talking to an attorney or at least do something called a provisional application, um, which will, is very expensive, but it's a way to get something on file and give you time to file a formal application. So are there misconceptions that a lot of people who aren't patent attorneys have about patents or uh, things that you think, you know, people, the first thing you tell people other than don't tell anybody about this when, when they walk into your office, what do, what do we need to know as business owners about patents? A patent covers, a, a, it's actually, there's two main types. There's a process and a device. And it has to be something that no one else has done, all right? And if someone hasn't done it, it has to be novel. And that's kind of a hard legal concept to explain. Mm -hmm. But basically what I always tell people, if you look at something and you say, that's cool, that's a neat idea, that's probably the best way to articulate what's novel. So it has to be something that no one else in the world has done before. And that means by researching everything, articles, papers, prior patents, anything. No one else has done it. And it's a novel idea. Um, and it will, it's, like I said, if you're a business, it's a process that you've done, how something is made, or if it's, it's a product. 
if it's a unique product. And I mean, you, you see these things on TV all the time. You see Shark Tank. Yeah, That's yeah. basically. And if you if it's something that no one else has done, like I said, and it's a it's a creative idea. The legal term is novel, but it's creative. <laughs> you can get a patent on it. So unlike a copyright, you don't have, you know, a copyright is it's effective once you reduce it to a tangible medium. Correct. A patent can be just an idea. You don't have to do anything other than file for the patent with your idea and, and put it down. A patent has to be what's called a legal, um, Kevin, is what's called a reduction to practice. And what that means is, class example, say, bad example, but like atomic bomb, equals EMC okay. squared, yeah. all right? Yeah. Okay, equals EMC squared is a formula. Okay, hey, I have an idea. Let's split atoms to make a bomb, all right? That's an idea. That's a concept. You can't get a patent on it because there's a lot more to it than that. Right. You've got to actually show someone how to make it. When you file a patent application, there has to be enough information in there for someone to build it. So there's two types. It has to be what's called a reduction of practice. You, if you put enough information to build it in the patent, that's fine. Or you can actually build it and then describe that in the patent. But there has to be enough in there for somebody to build it. So it's that next step, Kevin, of providing just not just the idea, but actually a useful product or a useful process. So if I if I'm yeah, I just had this great idea, you know, I, I've been I saw something on TV, I'm like, I can make that better. But I don't know if someone else is already doing it. Is there a way other than spending thousands of dollars on a patent attorney to research? To, is there like a first step to see whether it's even worth hiring a patent attorney and pursuing? That's, that's an excellent question. What I'd recommend you do, um, there's several things. You can, first of all, we call the term prior art. You just go look online, go on Google, use terms, search terms, see if you can find it, see if it's out in the marketplace. All right. The other thing you can go as look as patents. Google provides a pretty good search website, Google slash patents. Oh, really? And you can go on there. It's very user-friendly. It's not the best search engine, but it's very user-friendly. And then you can go to the patent office, USPTO.gov. They have a search engine. It's very unuser-friendly, <laughs> um, but it's very, very good. If you spend several hours looking for that idea and you don't find anything, then I would think maybe you want to look. And you don't need to hire an attorney for that. Do your own research. Spend several hours. If you decide, you know what, I'm really interested in this and I can't find anything, Two things. One, you can file what's called a provisional application, which doesn't have all the requirements of a formal. It's rather inexpensive. You can do 90% of the work. I would just have a patent attorney look at it before it's filed to make sure the requirements are in there. And then that will buy you a year. And you're still going to have to file a formal, which is very expensive. But it'll give you a year to decide whether or not, you know, and you can talk to people. Now you've got something on file. Mm -hmm. And you can put patent pending on it while the provisional is on file. No one examines it or anything, but it sits there for a year and gives you a year from which to file a formal and also protects your idea so you can talk to people about it. So now you've done your basic search, you can get a provisional on file, so now you have a year within which to further research it and decide whether or not you want to spend the money to put an investment in the product or get a formal patent application. So uh, we've been talking about people who come up with ideas on how to do things uh, and putting that out there, do you ever find in the marketplace that there are uh, clients have hired you that say, hey, I've been doing this or making this or doing this this way for 20, 30 years. Uh, is this something I can patent? Yes, I hear that a lot. And unfortunately, as I said earlier, once it's out in the public, Oh. And so if it's in public, that when, when you say in public, it's a very, very low bar. It's basically if anybody looking for it could find it. One of the classic cases is there was a public library that had like a book, a very remote rural library that had this book that had this invention described in it. That was considered public disclosure. Hmm. All right. The classic example is you're sitting around in a public location at dinner, maybe a bar, talking to your buddies about a great idea. And don't tell anybody. I'm going to tell you this. that's a public disclosure. The clock starts ticking right away. Oh. So, for example, if you are going to tell somebody they need to sign what's called a non-disclosure agreement, all right, that will stop the clock from ticking. But my recommendation is to get something on file because then you can talk to people about it and you don't have to worry about them signing non-disclosure agreements, especially a company. And the other problem is if someone signed a non-disclosure agreement and they break it, what are you going to do? Sue them. You know, I mean, it's just not really practical. So the best thing to do is to get something on file, like I said, probably a provisional application before you start talking to people about it. And that's the best way. There, it's like $100 to file. You can write, you just have to describe your invention, you file it, and then you can talk to people, spend a little bit more time and energy, and it gives you a year from then which to file a formal. And your potential to get a patent is protected.
Well, Steve, thanks so much for sharing your wisdom Thank with you. us today. You have offices in Chicago and Naperville. Yes, people we do. need help with patents. Patents are like the one area of law we don't practice, so we're happy to have uh, a good resource like you on to talk about that. Yeah, and we <laughs> focus on patents. So, like I said, O'Flaherty Law is a great, a great resource. And for other matters, we we tend to focus on patents. Uh, well, thanks, Steve. Cool. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. It, man. Thanks for watching our video. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. Click the subscribe button for new videos every week and download and review us on iTunes. Visit learn-about-law.com for other legal-related articles and videos. Visit our business podcast and video blog, seizeyourbusiness.com. And visit makingrealestatefun.com for real estate videos and podcasts. Call us at 630-324-6666 for a free consultation. Thanks for watching.